Hey, this is Enrico with EMU. Today we're going to cover a detail for the one of our Passive House projects in Colorado. And I wanted to share something that may be surprising to some of you, where we did have a raised hill for our trusses, and that was still not enough to deliver the performance that we were hoping for for our project. Something that I personally learned from this specific project, and I hope you enjoy what when the thermal boundary of our passive house envelope is at the ceiling, not at the roof, one condition that we can, we can have is that the edge of the insulation may be cut off by just the geometry of the connection uh, between the wall and the roof framing. This detail here on the screen shows the ideal condition where the insulation of the ceiling continues with the constant thickness all the way to the outside edge of the insulation of the wall. Clearly, this is an ideal scenario and it does not really happen in real life. But whenever we move away from this, uh, the loss of R value, the connection, becomes problematic for the whole building performance. We had specified 24 inches of insulation over the ceiling um, with cellulose blown in over the air barrier. And at the wall, we have a regular 2 by 6 framing with additional 4 inches of exterior insulation. Now, this cannot happen in real life because, you know, we do need a roof over the ceiling. So this is where things get a little bit complicated. If we switch to isotherm view for this ideal detail, we see that the isotherms flow nice and easy from the wall over into the roof insulation. When we move away from the ideal scenario and we start looking at how a roof are actually framed, we have this condition. This is a condition where the roof is framed with a truss. You see the top cord here and then the bottom cord here. And just because of the ge relative geometry between the ceiling and the roof, then we lose this corner of insulation. This is the drawing of this detail with the uh, regular truss framing. You see the truss top cord here coming down, sitting on the exterior wall and the bottom cord of the truss here. And if I turn, if I overlay the um, ideal scenario, uh, you see that we lose a, a fair amount of insulation from this corner, which undermines the performance of the building in this delicate corner. If we take a closer look to this detail, we see that we have the soffit outside, we have a gap here between the insulation and the underside of the roof decking. That is for, to vent the attic, to remove moisture, which is great, but also that uh, removes additional insulation from my junction meaning that uh, in the center of the ceiling, I had specified 24 inches of insulation. Here at the very end, I end up with maybe six or seven inches. So a lot less insulation than the actual R value called for. Now we switch to the isotherm view. And you see that the isotherms are now squished in between this little uh, area of, of the much less insulation before they can open up again with the 24 inches of insulation. And this limits the performance of this detail uh, from a thermal standpoint. A common way to mitigate this issue or this risk is to increase the height of the heel of the truss, which is the height from the top of the wall to the underside of the roof decking. This is shown in uh, millimeters, but it would be the same for inches. And something that we often specify for project in Climate Zone 5 is to have a 16-inch heel height for the 24-inch um, insulation package. So raising the heel of the truss, in other words, using a, an energy uh, heel, would, looks, would look more like this, where we actually have 16 inches. We just push the roof up. And now from the top of the wall to the underside of the deck, we have 16 inches. We look at the isotherms, the area that is squished is a lot less. And so the performance is much better than not having the energy, energy heal. And if this was all of it that I wanted to talk about today, this video would be over. Unfortunately, it is not like that because the team that we were working with had some other plans for the aesthetics of the project as well as the HOA of the local development had some uh, roadblocks for us. And we had to work through some hopes to make this work. But I want to cover a little bit more of the building science behind it. 
See, what I talked about so far, the height of the energy hill, is relative to the pitches of the ceiling and of the roof. And that impacts things quite a bit for the performance of this detail. Here we have an interior ceiling pitch of about two and a half inches per linear foot and a pitch of the roof of eight inches per uh, linear foot. What happens if the pitch of the ceiling and the pitch of the roof are closer to one another? In other words, what if the pitch of the ceiling and the pitch of the roof are so close that uh, that added to this impact that is a lot deeper? This initial detail had a roof pitch of 8 inches in 12, and the ceiling is 2 in 12. But what if we change the pitch of the roof to 6 in 12? In other words, the roof becomes more flat, or even 4 in 12, so a pretty slow pitch um, for the ceiling, for the roof. And that is actually the condition we had for this project. And let's see the impact that it has overall. If we take a closer look to this uh, detail, the ceiling pitch is two and a half inch in 12. The roof pitch is four in 12. So they're very close to each other. And so the area that this uh, detail impacts is very large. In other words, um, this impacts several feet from the outer edge of the insulation all the way to the inside. If we go back and compare it, uh, this theta with the 4 in 12 roof pitch and we um, overlay that with the ideal scenario, we see that a very long area of the detail connection is impacted by this um, underperformance, uh, basically from the outside of the insulation till here, which is about seven feet in length, the whole area of the ceiling is impacted before we actually get to the full 24 inches thickness of insulation that we had originally specified. So this is very significant because you're losing a lot of insulation overall and your building will perform less well than it was specified to begin with. If we take a look at the isotherm view, we can see that these are squished, so to speak, or more compressed for a much longer area and that results in the heat flow having a much easier way to escape because we cut off a bunch of that insulation at the corner compared to the ideal scenario. If we look at the actual numbers for the heat losses, we will, we had started from an ideal scenario, which is the highest performance one because there's, the insulation keeps at the same thickness throughout, and that is not possible to do. Then we looked at different combinations of um, truss heel height as well as roof pitches. We saw that the um, we want to increase the uh, heel height in order to uh, minimize the loss of insulation and the loss of performance of this detail. But we also, what we found from looking at the actual performance is that if, you, if your um, roof pitch and ceiling pitch are too close to each other, which is in the last scenario that we looked at with the 4 in 12 pitch, that even if we have a 16 inch heel height, that performs worse than a regular heel, uh, heel height truss with uh, an eight inch roof pitch because that impacts the insulation in a smaller portion. So having heel, high, heel trusses um, or energy trusses is important, but it is not enough to guarantee that performance. With this video, I hope you understood that it's not just enough to have a checklist uh, for your project. In this case, we did have a raised heel for our trusses, but because the HOA required the roof pitch to be so much slower, we lost a bunch of performance in the detail, even if we had 16 inch uh, raised heel for the truss. So don't trust checklists. It's important to have this performance analyzed in the de design stage so that you can actually get the performance you're looking for for your project. Thank you for watching this. As always, I appreciate you watching me geeking out about construction and building science. If you want to learn more about uh, Passivals and our training opportunities, this is a QR code that you can use to get to know us and what training opportunities we offer as well as we have an, a free info session every first Thursday of the month. Um, if you have projects, if you have 
questions about training or building science, bring, please bring them along and we can go over them together.